Hey guys, this is Ron, Secret the Stars, and welcome back to my channel. So, it's not really surprising, but welcome back. It I didn't post anything last week. Uh, the last part video I posted was two weeks ago, and it was the lantern in fluffy covers in bed type of drawing where I was playing around with lighting. If you haven't seen that, please go check it out. I am kind of proud with how that turned out, and especially since I was kind of stepping out of my comfort zone with the lighting and the way I do stuff in that particular piece. But I actually did plan to release something the week after, and it was supposed to be my Merlin Celebration Summoning Fate Grand Order fan art. But even today, I'm not done with it yet, so it's gonna get pushed back until I actually finish it. <laughs> Which is sad because the, the next... The, his summoning ban is already done so it can't be a catalyst anymore so... It's just gonna be a celebration piece. But I'm happy, I got Merlin. Cool. Anyway. Yeah, so that's digital, that's why it's taking so long. And I think you've noticed by now from my very rare digital pieces that I actually do take such a long time with digital, with digital art nowadays. There was a point in time in college where I just kind of blazed through them and now I'm trying to familiarize myself again with the program and the the motions of it. So it's taking me a while again. Oh well. <laughs> so today we are gonna do colored pencils which is a surprise. If you've been watching my channel you know that my main medium is watercolors because it's fast, it's somewhat free-flowing, um, even though my style is a more controlled style of using watercolor. So I guess you can gather from that that colored pencils aren't exactly my go-to because they feel kind of tedious to me or you have to be, to be very precise and you're kind of slow with it and to a lot of people it's relaxing but to someone like me who's a little bit impatient with my art it's not super relaxing. Like, I want to see stuff right away. So, for me, wet media like watercolor or acrylics or oils do the job for me because with just a few strokes of your brush, you've covered this entire area, area already. But the colored pencils, you're very deliberate. You're very calm. Which doesn't really suit me, I guess. <laughs> But it's surprising that I wanted to do colored pencils. It, it was totally out of the blue. The, I didn't think I'd ever think of thinking, hey, let's draw a piece. Oh, let's do colored pencils. Usually it's like, hey, let's draw a piece. Uh, almost completely no particular concept. It's not properly planned out. And go, hey, it's watercolor because that's my go-to. But since my brain somewhat decided to that I wanted to do colored pencil. I thought not to waste the momentum and just went with it. So actually today, oh before I, that's, before I continue, if my voice sounds weird or me sniffling every now and then, I may have caught a bit of a cold so my throat actually does hurt a little bit. So if my voice dies down eventually in the video, I'm sorry. <laughs> Somehow it's not. I don't think it's affecting my voice box that, that much. It just hurts a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, I do sound a little bit stuffed up. <laughs> so sad. Okay, where were we? Right, so today we're actually kind of drawing on my sketchbook. Mainly because the paper is so nice. Uh, it's really thick paper and I feel like it could... Uh, take a little bit of beating and it's a bit smooth but it's not too smooth so I thought that hey maybe colored pencils would work well with this paper so if you're curious this is the limelight sketchbook obviously the plain one um, there's not much details on that except it's just the limelight sketchbook and it's nice it's, it's really nice paper even when I was doing the line art the super smooth um, the erasing on it's pretty good, even though I did notice that when I erased, when I was already coloring with the colored pencils, I could see a little bit of the indentation from the pencil. Maybe that's just 
me having a heavy hand or who knows, maybe it's just soft paper. But it's really good. Um, I've tested Copics on this, I think. And it did bleed, but I think it'll be able to handle it somewhat decently if you don't layer it too much. I haven't tried to put water based media with it yet. I don't think I will since I have a lot of watercolor paper. But it's decent, it's really decent. And I've been trying to find paper that would work well with colored pencils. So this entire time I've been using the Fabriano hot pressed watercolor paper for my colored pencil stuff. Even then I feel like my hot press stuff has a little bit too much texture for me. So I was looking for something a bit more, a bit smoother, but it could take several layers. So this paper did a pretty decent job. Um, it didn't take as much layers as I hoped. It eventually did stop letting me layer stuff on, especially the hair. So it's decent, but maybe not quite the best for colored pencils just yet. But yeah, so that's why I'm drawing my sketchbook, and maybe it'll also let me, it'll also urge me to do finished pieces in sketchbooks again. I did that at one point when I had good paper. So actually, I think it depends on the paper. So I used to do a lot of final works in my sketchbook, but sometimes when the paper is too thin, or it's not like, it's not the highest quality paper, it's like it's decent paper, but it's not high quality or super thick, like this limelight one or the moleskin ones, I switch to use- I switched- I started switching to using other types of paper instead that's intended for that medium. But since this paper and sketchbook is good, I might do more works with this. Yeah, it's fun to be able to leave through the sketchbook and then see a finished piece in there. Now my only worry is that I'm scared that the pencil lead that I used on the left side, where I did the sketches and the thumbnails for this particular piece, might rub off on the colored piece. I hope not, but I don't know how I'll protect this one. And I don't have any of those sealant type of stuff. Oh well. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about like the theme and the concept, I guess. So the original idea that I had around a year ago or maybe two years ago was like this some sort of red haired flaming uh, sword goddess. Maybe she's submerged in water and the, her source is brightly glowing. And the, the and the image is still pretty burned up in my mind and the pose is pretty similar. But when I, when I started doing the drawing, it kind of changed. I think it started with the outfit. I couldn't get the, the outfit down because I had the pose and the main idea, but I couldn't. I didn't imagine her outfit. So when when it became this outfit, it didn't feel very goddessy anymore, and it turned to be somewhat more of a like a, a knight or a princess or some sort of swordswoman. So. I changed it up a little bit. I might still do the flaming red-haired goddess thing, but maybe with a different pose and vibe instead. But we'll see. So, another thing actually, because as you just saw just now, I did the jump cut there. But as you can see, the pace of the video is a bit slower now. I'm actually using my footage is natural 2x speed, I think. So I'm using frame lapse. Yeah, it is frame lapse, I think. The, the frame lapse app on Android to record my videos. It keeps it in a nice smaller format than just using the one from Samsung's camera itself. And it's pretty decent. And what I used to do is that I would take the frame lapse file and I would even speed it up even more in Premiere because I wanted to show the entire process. But that meant it being super fast and basically just speeding through the entire video. Maybe it gets even boring because you're just seeing the same thing over and over again, especially with colored pencil. But I wanted what I wanted to try this time with this video was to show the more important parts and then just cut through the more repetitive parts. So let me know down the, in the comments what you prefer to see more. If it's 
if you like this more slowed down, you see what I'm doing kind of type of vibe versus the more sped up um, show everything but it's super sped up type of video. Because for me, before logically it kind of made sense to show the entire thing, the entire process. But now that I'm actually watching more videos and I'm watching back and I'm kind of, you know, com contrasting and comparing with other art YouTubers, I see that a lot of people prefer this more gentle, um, not to really be gentle, but more chill uh, vibe, chill speed. So let me know in the comments what you like. Because I think I'm gonna stick to this one. Unless it's a, I guess it's, unless it's a watercolor piece maybe or digital, because that that one is a little bit tough. Because it's not. Oh, we'll see. We'll see in the future. If you like this, let me know. If you don't, let me know. Just let me know in the comments. I will. I read and respond. So at this point. What I'm doing with her cloak and her cape, I wanted to keep a very soft, peachy vibe. I'm still sort of pushing the goddess vibe to it, so I wanted to go with more softer tones of color, as trying to make it very pastel, maybe a bit more whitish. But eventually, that didn't hold up. <laughs> so this one thing I'm still trying to learn with colored pencil, because with watercolor. You just need to add more water to sort of gradient it out into the white, like the natural color of the paper. With colored pencils, I know you can do that, especially I've done that with lead, so I know it's possible to do a gradual gradient into the paper, but I really haven't learned how to do it with colored pencils yet. Like it helps that I'm using polycarbos because they're super soft and they're very easy to work with, but I still need to learn how much control I need to put in on, on the pencil. But it does, when I was doing this, it kind of reminded me of my college day. So I had an entire class just on drawing, and we just used lead. And I used the 6B pencil, so that's very, very soft. It's also very, very dark. And you eventually learn techniques on how to do shadows and lighting and smooth gradients with it. And you have to change how you hold your pencil. So I was trying to do that soft fade into the white with my colored pencils. I changed how I held the colored pencil and it took me back to my college days. Because it was really nostalgic holding the pencil like that again at a certain angle. Just to get this particular angle, it's this particular gradient. It was really fun. If you want to learn techniques like that, I guess you let me know. Though I'm not really an expert on colored pencils to be honest, but it was really fun and I missed it. I should do my pencil and lead stuff. So apologies for the big jump cut there. Uh, it wasn't a time management thing, it was more of me being kind of silly. Uh, I thought I was recording because <laughs> I had the, the app open and then when I looked at Look up at my phone, I saw that it's back to my wallpaper. So it's either that the crash it it's either the app crashed or I forgot to hit the the record button so the app just closed. So it's more possible that the app just closed because I didn't press record. <laughs> so you didn't really miss much. I just colored in the white parts with a very light blue to create some shadows. I then created a little bit more detail on her cups and some parts here and there with turquoise just for a pop of color for contrast. Now we're gonna be doing the background. My original idea was supposed to be like a dark teal underwater-ish sort of vibe. But I didn't know I don't know. Like I felt like the this more billowing, curvy type of background suited her more. I guess because of her hair or something like that. The only thing I was worried about with the background is if I thought maybe maybe it's too detailed or maybe it's eating her up too much, maybe it's too dark. Um, on camera, it looks great. I actually really like the contrast on, on camera. In real life, I feel like maybe not so much. 
you know what? I need Andern. Not any stuff eventually. <laughs> so yeah, I'm actually using the Faber Castle Pit Artist Pens. I rarely use these. They're into ink pens if you don't know. They are brush nibs. But I do tend to use them when I don't wanna just use up one of my more precious art supplies. So with colored pencils, I always worry about using up an entire pencil just for the background. So what I usually do is I cheat. I use colored pen I use um watercolor, I use markers, everything but the colored pencil. <laughs> So what I do now is I just, I'm just using the colored pencil to create more definition, create some shadows here and there. Um, not gonna really use it up for the background. So, we are nearing the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I know it's nearing 18 minutes long, and I hope it wasn't too much of a drag watching it. Let me know if this was fine with you. Um, I hope it wasn't too boring or anything like that, or this was too long or anything. Let me know, I know. Let me know your opinion. Um, so, it was a bit hard to scan this because I couldn't quite get the right color for the hair when it was scanned. That's the best I could do right now. But I hope, you, I hope you enjoyed. Like or subscribe if you did. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or Art to see my art. And I hope I'll see you around. Bye!